Hi everyone, this is a quick update to let you know that the audiobook for my debut novel Dreams of Dying is now finally available. It's narrated by Ben Britton and Dave Fenoy. Ben Britton is the voice of Jasper in the Enderal game and Dave Fenoy you might know from games such as um, The Walking Dead by Telltale. And I'm very excited, I think they did a terrific job. Just a quick note, there are two editions of the audiobook. There is the music edition and the standard edition. And as the name implies, the music edition comes with a subtle soundtrack specifically composed for the novel by my friend and the end all composer Marvin Kopp. I think it's great, but I know that music with audiobooks isn't everyone's thing. So I also created the standard edition without all that. At this point, the standard edition is unfortunately not available on Audible due to technical limitations. We are working to get that resolved, but in the meantime, you can get it from other providers. I have all the links on my website. And of course, if you buy the music edition and you find it not to your liking, then you can just send me an email with a receipt and I will get you a code or some or the other audiobook in some other way. Yeah, well, thank you. It's been a ride. It was quite an experience producing that audiobook all by myself. Um, I think, again, I think the actors and also Marvin did a terrific job. And I will leave you with a small sample, short sample of the audiobook so you can get an impression yourself. And I am very much looking forward to your feedback. And then you dreamed of Masio Tremoreste? Enk she asked. He spoke like an emissary afraid to offend, but could not keep the confusion out of his voice. I had a dream, yes, but it wasn't a normal one. Do you know those where you suddenly become aware that you are dreaming and can control what happens? It was like that. A lucid dream, Jaspar said. He had had that experience several times, that sudden clarity, though unfortunately never during a nightmare. That's what the scholars call them, yes. It's really hard to describe to someone who has never felt it. But it was incredible. I knew I was dreaming, and that my body was asleep in the chapel, and it all felt so incredibly vivid, to the point where I wondered if I had somehow ended up in a different world. Her gaze dropped to her Aleppo, and she stopped petting him. Using her other hand, she gently parted the fur of his chubby neck fold and plucked something from the crease, a withered orchid leaf. She carefully placed it on the table. Anyway, the dream started with me lying in bed in our sleeping chamber, but I was alone, and someone was screaming in the distance. Yaros? Anxi asked. I believe it was him, yes, but something about his voice sounded very odd. It was muffled, like it was coming from the bottom of a lake. I know it's a strange comparison, but that's exactly what I thought at that moment. And I also knew something terrible was happening to him. So I got up and I tried to find him. It was pointless, though. The entire ziggurat was deserted, and no matter where I went, the screams got neither louder nor softer. It was driving me crazy. I felt as though I was watching someone who means the world to me walk toward an abyss but I was completely and utterly powerless to stop him. Jaspar, who knew the feeling all too well from the nightmares involving his sister, felt his fingers dig into the armrest. He forced his hands to relax. Why didn't you wake yourself up? In the lucid dreams I've had, I could do that whenever I wanted. Yes, the scholars I talked to afterwards said you're supposed to have that ability, but I tried and it didn't work. That was horrifying, as you can imagine. There I was, running through these deserted hallways, chasing after my husband's voice. But I could neither find him nor wake up. She let out a small sigh. It went on for what felt like an eternity. And then, just when I thought I was losing my mind, something happened. I was going down another corridor, and a figure appeared at the end. The woman at the bookshelf stepped into the light. She was pretty, around Jaspar's age, with ponytailed chestnut hair and a tanned but naturally light complexion that marked her as an outlander. A root-shaped scar ran down her left cheek and vanished behind the collar of a brown cotton jacket. And that figure was Maceo Tremoreste. 
It was wearing a morning mask that covered all but the eyes, so I couldn't tell, but for some reason, it did feel extremely familiar. <laughs>